Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, this is just the introduction. It'll be on all the videos. I will put a timestamp where you can bypass this. Hope you don't. I hope you watch it at least one time, but if you're cross-watchers, you know, you watch for your moon, your rising, ascending, um, Venus, whatever it is, you can then just go there and it'll click you right towards where you want it to be. Okay. Now, again, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, I will be using my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards for the main reading. I will pull one from my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards, and I will, of course, use my Emily Anderson Crystal Deck. Crystal, yes, crystal deck. Now, for the introduction, we will do an overview with my weight rider, rider weight tarot cards, and my, oh yes, I still have to look, Colleen Barron Reed, the good tarot. Okay, now I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate to, for you. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Okay? Have fun with this. Now, Interesting times. Oh, I am, an, I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. My job is just to, you know, just to say whatever comes, in, just comes through. Not even try to think about it, which, you know, that's a little hard to do sometimes. But let it just flow and let it just come out. Okay, so the weekend. Yeah, we've been having a lot of the um, Schumann resonance. We've been having those white spikes. I am not an expert on that. I try to give you what I find so just you know know that but you could also do your own you know looking that up in the um wide internet but i do get the schumann resonance um the that spiky thing the white thing i do take a uh, screenshot of that from the schumann resonance um you know website itself it's in siberia so interesting times um we can all feel the energies moving uh, what are we having? This weekend is going to be one of those other t those other interesting times too, because we have on the second on the second, and remember, it's not a light switch that just goes boop, it's on, and then boop, it's off. It's more of a dimmer switch. So we could be feeling this first through the third, maybe even longer. But on the second, we have Mars, which is in Aries, squaring with Pluto, which is in Capricorn. So when they're squaring, it's kind of like they're egging each other on. There's kind of that uh, frenemy type of thing. You do it. No, you do it. You get in trouble. No, you get in trouble. So Mars and Aries, both, you know, the gods of wars, you know, depending Greek or Roman, um, you know, culture. And then we have Pluto. So that's the war energy. That's the going forth energy. They like to be, you know, Mars likes to be with Aries. Aries likes to be, Mars to be in in that constellation so it's just really very let's go forward let's get this you know let's let's get this done let's make some havoc okay sometimes it's good sometimes who knows it could be a little bit disheartening too anyway then we have pluto in capricorn uh it is retro so it's visiting spots that it has just you know been in and one of the spots it's very very close to it's almost like in that same little sweet spot um remember when i was talking about february 19th and then you know 22nd you know the 222 energies and that was something to do with the uh it was last there for the united states birth chart in 1776 july 4th well it's like there's like it's either like a degree off or it's like a minute off but it's kind of in that same sweet spot so mars in aries pluto in Capricorn, we know Pluto, transformation, destruction, but that things have, you know, tower card type of energy. Things have to be destroyed in order for it to be rebuilt. And I do feel like we're sort of, sort of, kind of, sort of in that rebuilding period, but it's not necessarily easy. So we've got those two kind of, um, you know, going at each other a little bit. So we have that. Put them aside. Now we have Mercury that's in Gemini. It is trining, and that's a very happy, that they work together now. Let's do this. Mercury, communication, also electronics, um, so, but mostly communication. Mercury likes to be in Gemini. Gemini loves Mercury. Very chatty type of energy there. Um, then we have that trining, so it's coming together with Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn, again, these are the things that I've been saying about Saturn, is, you know, 
um, basically it is illusion versus reality. So the weekend could be very interesting. Things could be, you know, more and more, more revelations, more things happening, more coming out. A little bit of that, um, you know, that Pluto and Mars could be, you know, really, you know, like I said, loggerheads with each other. So let's see what we have. So look for an interesting weekend. And if you've been, if you remember what I was talking about, um, you know, the song Aquarius, well, you know, we also have the first and second, we have uh, the moon waxing in Leo. So some strong stuff going on. Let's see now. Let's use our cards and ask higher power, higher power, you know, what's going to happen? What's happening for this weekend? What do we need to be aware of? What are the energies like? And let's see, what are the energies like? Card falling out. When they fall out, it's like they need to come out. Let's go ahead and cut. See what we have. Two more cards. Anything reversed has stronger energies. Um, the court cards, you know, the page, knight, queen, king, they have dual energy. So let's see what we've got going on here for the weekend overview. We, this is the card that fell out. The Fool. Now, this is reversed. So, we have The Fool. Now, this is a lovely card. I love The Fool. Um, you know, there's so much hope. There's just so much um, passion with The Fool. The Fool has been called to go on this journey. The Fool, you know, people are saying, well, you're, that's really foolish of you. But The Fool just says, I'm called. I have, no other, I have no other real choice but to do what I need to do. So, we have a zero. Zero is God source energy. Numbers have meanings. Now, a lot of times numbers can be used for dark energy. We like to use them more for the light energy. So zero is God source energy. The fool, new, new journey, new calling, new, you know, just new. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what's going to be happening with this. I just know that I have to do this. Um, you know, the fool carries this little, you know, carries this flower, carries this little bag, and basically has confidence and just believes, even though the journey may be rough, at this point, the the fool is like, yes, let's just start. So something starting, something changing, something is moving on. And again, there, you know, the fool is on the precipice, and we've all been feeling that type of energy, like, like you know, where are we going? It looks like he's about to um, fall, you know, off. He's just, you know, just kind of just, you know, head in the clouds, or not in the clouds, in the sun, just kind of looking up, not watching even where he's going. But we don't know. We don't know what's below. Maybe it's a step down into another level. Who knows? But that's, a th that's the journey of the fool. We don't know. We just have to trust. We have to have faith. And again, it's saying we're being called to something that we don't even know. You know, we don't know the outcome. We don't know the end. Next card is, okay, now we have another major arcana. We have the devil. The devil is a 15. So it's a 1, 5. Again, the 1 is new beginnings, new start, 10, transitional energy, plus a 5. 5 is all about change. A lot of times it's 555. Five, five. We've all seen those, you know, those double, triple numbers. Um, you know, change, change, change. Could be positive, could be negative. The thing about this, as we start the new journey, the thing about the devil, the devil is, um, a lot of that is being ruled by fear. You know, breaking out. Do we break out? Do we even leave our chains? What are we supposed to do with this? The thing is, when you look at the chains, the chains are loosely bounding. So they, these, these, whoever or whatever these are could slip these change and you know chains and move on but is it basically you know rather stay with the devil you know than go on the fool's journey this is a lot of this is facing your fears come coming um coming confronting your you know just coming to face to face your fears the end the thing about this is now you know we don't necessarily want to stay in this in this very um you know this harsh energy here the interesting thing when you look at these people, and you know, there's a feminine and a masculine, is they're no longer human. They're they're no longer fully human. They're being transformed into something else. So the fool is saying, break, you know, is saying, come on, we're being called to something else. The devil basically says, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to do this? You know, wouldn't you rather stay with what you know than maybe try something new or maybe, you know, try a new pathway? 
So this is, a lot of this is the, um, you know, like I said, facing fears. But, um, you know, you've been following me for a while. This comes up periodically. It's, you know, fear is the tool of the devil. It's one of the tools of the devils. A devil. It keeps you from following your journey. It keeps you from moving on to where you need to move on to or where you're being called. It, fear can keep you from your calling. Okay, let's see what this next card is. And there we have it. Again, reversed. Were they all reversed? I think they were. But again, we have that five. Five energy. We have the Hierophant. You know that I'm not necessarily a big fan of the Hierophant. The Hierophant, to some readers, is saying you're coming to your higher calling, that you're being, you know, that you're just, you know, you're just rising above yourself. To me, the Hierophant is the business of religion, the business of government, the ruling of the religion, the ruling of government. Basically, very strict, very structured. So it's kind of like fear. Do we stay with one? Do we go on that new journey? So this weekend does have a lot of that. Um, does have a lot of choices for us. And, you know, it could also be that many of us who follow, many of us who have, you know, you've communicated with me, um, I do believe that, you know, star seeds, um, indigo, crystal children, whatever, you know, whatever time period you came in, and like I say, I'm from the old time period, um, you know, there is, there is some changes. We have some choices to make. Which way are we going to go? Which, what, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the conformity of the Hierophant? Or are we going to choose maybe the freedom or the liberation of the fool? I don't know, but it's interesting energy. And many of us are seeing this. So we have, again, 515, which is 555. We have that 5 energy again, change, change, change. Do we go with the changes um, or do we not? So this is, again, this has very, this is structure. This is very, um, very limitating energy. The Hierophant is very, you know, limitating um, the Hierophant and anything that you want to read about the Hierophant, it's kind of like, well, you can, you know, get with like-minded, you can stay with the what, what you know, or maybe you should try something new. So let's see. Interesting. This is, oh, I don't know, quite know what to tell you about this. These are big, powerful stuff. So let's see what we've got here. Let's see what we've got here now. Let's go on. With the Colleen Baron Reed. I don't know why I have such a hard time with her name, but I want to say it correctly. And let's see. The Good Tarot, Higher Power. What would you like to tell everyone this week, for this weekend, for Friday, Saturday, Sunday? What do we need to know? Here we go. Now, you can also see the pentacle is skewed. So that could be, you know, the pentacles, you know, the pen, the, um, the pen, the sign of the pentacle, pentacles, that is our earth energy, that is our money, job, career. It's also Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo energy, too. So there could be, the, you know, we, we're all having some strange things going on, so it could be money that is being used to keep us in fear. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's see what this is all about. And now, again reversed, we have the five of air. Five of air. Air energy is our Aquarius. I told you we've got stuff going on with Aquarius. Saturn's in Aquarius. It's, it's our Gemini. Mercury is in Gemini also. It is also our Libra energy. Now, it is about our thought processes, hearing news, making plans. A lot of times, the, this is also the Five of Swords. And you know, the Five of Swords always has Sneaky Snake there. Somebody that is not honorable. Somebody that's trying to um, pull one over you. So this one, had, this Five of Air has that, that mental conflict, that mental, um, you know, what am I supposed to do? How am I, what am I, where am I, who am I supposed to trust? What am I supposed to trust? The, you know, the Five of Air is leaves you spinning. The Five of Air... Um, leaves you not knowing which way which way to really go. Do I trust what I believe I know, or do I trust what I know I believe? So it's there's there's some real conflict with this. There's some real conflict. Um, not quite sure where we're going with any of it. I hope that I follow the um, fool's journey. You never know, though. You never know. No judgment with this. 
but there is some mental conflict, there is some mental choices, there is who do I trust, where do I, you know, what do I trust, what am I supposed to, you know, what, where am I supposed to be going? So um, I would say that there is some, uh, going to have some conflicted energies going on, but I do feel I am going to go, because this is the one that fell out, I am going to go with the promise of the fool and say that things will be put on, our, you know, that we will choose the journey. So, interesting, of course, it's always interesting, you know. So let's, let's see, let's see what we have going on with this one. But I, this is just some, this has some really interesting energies right here. And, um, you know, I don't know. Which way do we choose? What do we choose? Okay, I will be starting the videos right after this, but please take a moment to do all that liking, you know, like, 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 go down, like everybody, like it all, um, and that, but like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications, and why don't we start our videos now? Hello to my Capricorns, and how are you, my sensitive souls? Oh, are you feeling this Pluto stuff going on? It feels like, you know, and this is that moment where it's it's not quite that February 19th, 22nd type of energy where it's totally in, but it's so close to that. It's so close. Very, um, hmm, I don't know what we want to even say it. You know, it's like it's ready to uh, to jump for things are ready to ready to move, ready to change. So interesting. Let's see what happens with all of this. We've had a lot of changes. And my Capricorns, you've got, you have grown stronger, but then there's many of you that will say, yeah, I didn't want to be this strong. So let's see. Let's see what higher power, higher power, what do you have for my Capricorns? Well, many lessons have been learned. I know you didn't want to learn that much either. So I know that. I know that. I have said that to, to God so many times. I didn't need to know this. I did not need to know this, but surprise. Anyway, let's see. Higher power. What does Capricorns need to know, or what will help them for this weekend? Helpful energies for this weekend. Here we go. One, two, and three. Three cards. Move this over there. Okay. Reversed. First card is the seven of earth. What, whatever this is, you've been preparing for this. You're preparing for this day, preparing for this weekend. You are prepared. Just keep waiting a little longer. Things are happening. Now, seven's energy, divine energy. It's a divine number. It's divine umbrella, you know, being watched over, taken care of. It's a divine intervention. You know, you want to go left and you're kind of told, no, go straight. It's also divine interference. You really want to go left. I mean, you want to go that way, and somehow the wheel just won't turn. It's like, no, you are going straight. So there is a lot of heavenly and divine protection, energy, guidance with the sevens, okay? Earth energy is, of course, your energy, Taurus and Virgo. You're, again, Pluto's in yours. Uranus is in Taurus. So there is a lot of expect the unexpected energy going on. Even if Taurus, even if Uranus has been a little bit on the um, silent side, it's still in there. So there is some things happening, things changing. Be prepared. The thing about this weekend is all about preparation for you. Now, it is, you know, could be about job, money. It could be about your home. You could be moving. You could be making some major changes in your life. But none of these are things that you aren't ready to make, okay? You aren't, you know, all I should say there, you are definitely ready for whatever this is. Whatever, the, you know, these changes aren't going to be so harsh for you because, like I said, you've learned a lot, you've gone through a lot. This is going to be like, this is going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I got this. But I do feel like there's going to be some big energies. So even though you got it, I think it could be very exciting and a wonderful energy for you, okay? So here we are, the seven of earth, seeds well planted, a temporary pause in action, unnecessary worry. So don't, don't, uh, don't think so hard on this, okay? Things are, things are pl plowing along, things are turning the way they're supposed to be turning. Next card is reversed, strong stuff, is the five of fire. So now, things are happening the way they're supposed to be happening. You've, you've planned for this. I Now, the fives come up. Five is about change. Positive or negative, doesn't matter. It's stressful. Fire energy is our Leo. 
we're close. Yeah, you know, we have Leo waxing moon at least for the weekend. Aries, we know Mars is in Aries, so there is some of that conflicting, conflicting type of energy, and it's also Sagittarius, that full moon. So there is this fire energy, this big energy, this moving you toward, you know, moving you on energy. So you know, passionate, very burning, very, uh, very committed energy, very sweeping energy. The five of fire has a lot of things happening to it. There's too much to go on. It almost is kind of like, just as an aside. Like uh, maybe you've been preparing to sell your house or you're being you're preparing to move and then the big weekend is there and you find that even though you, you know nothing can really prepare you for what the changes are. OK, this is what I'm here. You know, even though you're prepared, you're mentally, physically, you're um, you know, you, you've got the boxes packed. You're never truly prepared. There's always other things that have to happen. There's always more going on than you thought. So try not to control the situation so much. Do what you can and, and don't, don't hit yourself. You know, don't beat yourself up if you didn't think of everything. Okay? Because the five of fire is saying you're not going to think of everything. But things will get done and things will, the job, the, the deadline, whatever it is, it will be met. Okay, so competing goals, bothersome details, conflict with others. So yeah, there, you know, with that Mars and Aries and stuff, there can be a little bit of irritation with other people too. So let's go on with the next card, reversed, the Nine of Air. So now, Virgo got this too. So just if you have any Virgo in your um, natal chart, you might want to take a peek at Virgo. Nines, wrap it up. You've got everything you need. Air is our Aquarius, our Libra, it is our Gemini. Remember, Aquarius and Libra have some stuff going on there too. So there is there is that air energy. Nine of air is <laughs> my sensitive Capricorns. It's you worrying too much. It's you worrying too much. You've got, you know, like I said, you're prepared. You've gotten everything that you need done. Yeah, it might be a little rough. It might be a little hard. You know, it might be a little bit tumult, tumultuous, tumultuous, uh, you know, but you've gotten, you've done everything you're supposed to be doing. Now, you know, so stop, let, let it go. Give it to God. Give it to higher power. Give it to your angels. Give it to your spirit guides. Give it to who that is for you. And just hit, cut yourself some slack and know you've done everything you're supposed to do. Because the nine of air is really very illusionary. It's really, it's not, it's not factual. It's more the, the, the um, negativity and the, just the turmoil that you put upon yourself. Okay? So, the nine of air is expecting the worst. Self-fulfilling prophecies. Sleepless nights. A self-fulfilling prophecy is when you keep saying, oh, that's gonna, it's, it's all going to go down, it's all, nothing good's going to happen. Nothing. You keep putting that out into the world, into the universe, into the air, and you, you'll find out that even if it turned out wonderful, you'll, all, you'll be hypercritical about everything. Okay, So just cut yourself some slack, be patient with others, and, you know, and cut them some slack too, because that seven of earth is really saying, You've got, you've got this. You've got this, my, my Capricorns. You've done, you've prepared well. You've prepared well. Okay? So, let's see. So, it looks like a busy weekend for you. It feels very busy. It feels like, you know, there's like that nine of air. Oh, if I could have done more, I could have. Oh, stop it. Stop it, my Cappies. Okay. Let me give you a big hug and kiss and say, you did great. You've done great. Anyway, let's see. Higher power, what else can we tell our Capricorns? What can we tell our Capricorns for this week? Weekend. Here we go. Solar plexus. So now we've got a three. Three, power of three, celebration. Um, also creativity. Solar plexus is right, well you can't see it, but it's one of the chakra energies. And there's lots of chakras, but of the seven main energy, the solar plexus is right below your heart, okay? And it's about your integrity. It's, your, it's living with yourself. It's doing the right thing. It's knowing, knowing that you've done what you could do, okay? So the solar plexus uh, chakra is having a little more faith in you. I mean, if you really didn't do it, if you didn't do enough, if you didn't prepare, you'll have to be very honest about that. 
because the solar plexus is about integrity. So if you didn't do enough, you know, I mean, if you, if you, um, like a, a teenager having to do a term paper, do they still have to do term papers? And, you know, and you've had five weeks to do this, and then that last day, that last night you're doing, and you're wondering why you might not have passed, it's because you didn't do the preparation. But then you have to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself, honest with others. And the solar plexus has a lot of that. But it doesn't mean beating yourself up either. It's looking at the situation and seeing, you know, when you're looking at the situation and you have done what you've got to do, you know, know that there are things that are out of your hands, okay? It's not all about, believe it or not, it's not all about you, my Capricorns. Other people play parts in this too. So it's not about you and you have to, you have to know that and then that helps you to live with whatever this is. It's not, in actuality, whatever this is, it's not necessarily a bad weekend, okay? It's, it's one that you're just going to be a little more hypercritical of yourself. You're just going to be thinking, well, I could have done this better. No, 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 no. Whew. Simmer down. Breathe. Breathe through it and know you've done a really good job. You prepared well, okay? This is what the whole thing is. You've done what you need to do. You prepared well, okay? Have patience with yourself. Anyway, so yet yeah, it does this this weekend is not necessarily an easy weekend. The energies are quite high. The energies are quite high. So, let's see what we have here. What we have here, uh, what crystal or energy would be helpful for my Capricorns. Here we go. So cut yourself some slack. I know that's hard for you to do too. You're perfectionists. Here we go. Well, you know my favorite stone. I have to tell you, my favorite stone out of them all, well, until I decide something else. Protective, anxiety relief, aura cleansing, self-belief, black tourmaline. Hold on to that little puppy. <laughs> okay, my Capricorns, cut, like I said, know that you've done what you can do, but there's other people involved in this. There's other people. You are not alone, okay? It's not all on your shoulders. Anyway, my cappies, my sweet, sweet cappies, like, share, subscribe, do all of that, you know, click on the bell, notifications. Most importantly, this is really important. Really know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.